and I took my book, <laughs> my math book, and I just went poof right across his head. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So in today's video, y'all, we're doing a fun video. Y'all like these types of videos and so I just decided to continue them and they are, or this one is, things that are normal in the United States but not in Germany. There are going to be some controversial points in this video, you guys, and probably some stories that will blow your mind. So buckle up and get ready for this crazy journey of points. But yeah, with all that being said, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to follow me on Instagram because all of those things are free and they really help out my video. And so the first point you guys is probably going to be for an 18 plus audience and YouTube, YouTube, you better not. You better not demonetize me. You better not make this video limited to ads only because I'm talking about strip clubs. But in the United States, it is normal for strip clubs to be for things other than stripping. And you guys are probably thinking, what the heck are you talking about, Haley? But a lot of strip clubs in the United States offer casinos, they offer bars, they offer clubs, they offer dance floors for everyone else. They offer, did I already say casinos? They offer full kitchen restaurants. They offer hookah lounges. They offer all of these things on top of being a strip club. I think the main focus is that it is a strip club, but there are other amenities that are offered as well. I don't know the exact reason behind this, but I think what I have observed is that our bars and clubs and our party locations in the United States are usually shut down at around midnight to 3 a.m. Where I live in Florida, everything usually closes at like 2 a.m., meaning it closes at 1.45 and everyone has to be out by 2 a.m. And if you want to continue the after party or if you want to keep partying till 5 a.m., 6 a.m., you have to go to a strip club or you go to someone's house, but there aren't a lot of places that are open, you know, wee hours of the night that you can keep partying. A strip club is usually the only option. And so a lot of strip clubs, they want to cater to a bigger audience because it's more money for them. But when comparing it to Germany, it is not normal for a strip club to have all of these amenities. Also, Germany doesn't have the space that the United States has as well. So you can't have this humongous sprawled out strip club that offers all of these different, um, how do you say, booths and areas in the club um, for you to be able to do everything. And also in Germany, clubs are open till 6 a.m., sometimes 24 seven for the weekend. Like you go into a club on a Friday night, not come out until Sunday morning and call it an evening. And so there's really no need to have somewhere else that offers an after party because you're going to be able to party, party, party in clubs and bars. And I just found it to be pretty funny that when you're driving past strip clubs in the United States, you'll see them offering pay-per-view events. So if there's a UFC fight or a football game, a Formula One race, they will be showing it at the strip club. They'll be offering all you can eat um, chicken wings for $10.99. They probably have a whole dinner menu available to you with appetizers, main courses, and desserts. <laughs> and that's something you will never find in Germany and in the United States, especially in Florida, I know plenty of places that are like that. The next point is going to be a little bit more positive or a little bit more PG rated and it's going to be book fairs. Book fairs in the United States are these things that you have at schools and I used to think it was like just for me as a child like we grew out of this growing up or like progressing but my brother he just had one recently and I found it to be really cute. I'll show you guys actually what he got for me from the book fair so one second I gotta get it. My little brother got me these sunglasses <laughs> at the book fair, you guys. I wear them to the beach because they were probably like $2 or something and he got them as a gift for me and I find them to be pretty funny. Um, but a book fair does not just sell sunglasses, you guys. Its main purpose of going to schools in the United States is to sell or are to sell books. When I was growing up, I think the first book fair that I went to, um, it usually starts when you're around seven or eight years old up until you start middle school, so maybe 11. I remember I purchased all of the Harry Potter books. I think at the time Twilight was becoming a big deal, so I purchased maybe the first Twilight book that came out, and it was just a way to be able to purchase books because we don't have 
as many, I would say, freestanding bookstores as Germany does. If you're living in a major city or I would say an average size city, you will have them around, you know, certain corners. There'll be multiple bookstores in multiple different locations and not just humongous bookstores like Barnes and Noble. They have big bookstores here as well, but tiny little bookstores that are maybe one room. Sometimes they are very, how do you say, particular, like it might be just a children's bookstore or an adult bookstore, a vintage bookstore. They're very specific, but they're still readily available. And so yeah, next point, which is paper plates. And I will beat this like a dead horse. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because last night I watched a video of someone doing a house tour of their four plus million dollar home. Because a lot of Americans and people in my comment section will tell me that the only people that do this are poor people. And I literally watched someone giving a tour of their basically a mansion talking about they will only use paper plates, plastic cups, and plastic utensils because they don't want to use the dishwasher. And I was like, if that is not the United States, a lot of people say poverty wrapped in a Gucci belt or something. That's funny, but living in a four plus million dollar home and using paper plates and plastic utensils and plastic cups is also a wonderful representation of the United States because you're too lazy. I feel like every couple of videos I have to bring this point up in the hopes that Americans will watch these videos and see this and see me complaining about this and stop doing it. I know people that use paper plates for everything, like four or five paper plates a day. And they just throw them away. They use plastic utensils multiple times a day. They use plastic cups multiple times a day. Then they throw them away. I was doing the math to see if it made any sense to use paper plates and plastic utensils. Um, and I'll put it on the screen so you guys can see. I use Mike and I's lifestyle because we don't go to work. So I feel like if you're going to work from morning to night, you're really not going to have as many dirty dishes as Mike and I. And so I use this equation with us running the dishwasher two to three times a week and then comparing it to the money that you would spend on paper plates, um, plastic cups, and plastic utensils, you are putting or you are spending less money running the dishwasher than you are purchasing all of these plastic um, and paper one-use items, which are also really bad for the environment. And I guess that's one of the main differences between the United States and Germany is that people in the United States the convenience of being lazy is worth, how do you say, being wasteful. And in Germany, the convenience of being lazy is not being wasteful. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I'm trying my best to explain it to you guys, but in my head it does. The next point is going to be the baby shower, gender reveals, all of these things pertaining to throwing a party for a baby. These do happen in Germany, but they're not to the extent that they are in the United States. Usually it's one thing done in Germany, like a celebration of pregnancy, maybe a gender reveal that's also celebrating, you know, the parents having a baby. Um, that's something where everything is combined and you have maybe a baby party is what they call it. But where you have like um, a pregnancy reveal, a gender reveal, um, I'm trying to think of what else people have, a giving birth re reveal party. There are so many parties that I have been to in the United States where it's people like having a baby and every three months you got to show up and bring a gift, sit down, eat some cake, play a game, do all that stuff. For me, it's exhausting. Oh. And another little sub point for this is or are push presents. Push presents are relatively common in the United States, but they're not that common in Germany. And it's usually when partner one, partner two, they have a baby and then the person that had the baby gets a present from partner two. It can be something small like a piece of jewelry. It can be something big like I've seen women get cars. I know friends that have gotten cars as push presents or really expensive purses as push presents. Germans aren't the type of people or the type of society to really, you know, flaunt wealth or really put it in your face. And in the United States, we like doing that kind of stuff and what better way to do that than to throw a party. The next point is going to be a little controversial, but that's fine, you guys. I'm gonna try my best to explain it to the best of my abilities to where it's not too controversial. So in the United States, it is normal to have scooters, electronic scooters for disabled or obese people or people that need them. Now, I think there is a very clear distinction between disabled 
needing a scooter and obese and needing a scooter. And there's also a differentiation between being obese from personal choice and being obese because of other, how do you say, influences or factors. Now for me personally, there are two, how do you say, opinions that I have regarding this. The first one is that I find it to be inclusive. I find it to be a good thing to allow people that, like I said, have limited mobility, the ability to shop in a store. I find that to be an awesome initiative. But on the flip side of the coin, I find it enabling, especially for people that don't have anything wrong with them. They're just lazy. But it also shows a fundamental issue with the United States, which a lot of people never bring up when they talk about this point. And it again relies on charity or the graciousness of the grocery store providing someone with limited mobility the ability to grow grocery shopping, provide them with a medical tool that is necessary to be mobile. They have to depend on not their insurance, not the government, not on anything else. They have to uh, depend on the grocery store to provide that to them. And I find that to be so crazy. And so I always think when it comes to, you know, things being normal, versus not normal when you're looking at Germany, there are a lot of things that are funny. There are a lot of things that even at this point, you say, oh my gosh, look at the United States, all the obese people getting scooters. But when you dig down a little deeper and you think, why are these necessary? Why do these people, regardless if they're disabled, obese, what may have you, why is it that they do not have these things available to them through their health insurance? Why do they have to beg a grocery store? to have these things available. And so yeah, it's not normal for you to see these things in Germany because a lot of times people that are disabled, obese, and have limited mobility, they have things from their health insurance that is provided or are provided to them in order to be mobile. So the last and final point you guys is gonna be another school story. Y'all were just shocked about my school story. Um, in my last video when I talked about the Pledge of Allegiance, y'all are probably gonna be shocked about this one too. In the United States, it is normal or allowed, I should say, maybe not normal, but it is allowed in the United States. I wanna say in 19 states, I would say 10 to 20 states to use corporal punishment on children as a form of punishment, which is basically spanking a child at school when they get in trouble. I don't remember, I think it was my first year of high school, second year of high school. I remember I was at a certain school, so it had to be when I was 14 to 16. I was consistently picked on and bullied by this kid in my class. He would call me fat, he would call me, he would cuss me out. At the time I didn't use cuss words. And so I don't remember, it was like half of the school year he did this and then I just got tired of it one day and I took my book, <laughs> my math book, and I just went poof, right across his head. The teacher told me to leave and go to the principal. And so the principal was explaining what was going to happen to me and that I was going to get kicked out of school for a week. Not kicked out of school, I was gonna go to in-school suspension for a week. What happens though with in-school suspension is that you can't take part in any of your sport events or any of like the curricular, extracurricular activities that happen at school. And I was part of the varsity soccer team. And so we had one of our biggest soccer games like in a few days. And I was like, well, if I'm in, I, I, in school suspension, I'm not gonna be able to play in the soccer game. And so the other option that I had was that I could get spanked at the school at 14 to 16 years old, you guys. And so I was like, I guess I will take getting spanked over um, going to in-school suspension because I got to play soccer. And so my mom had to come, ask her about this as well. I might include the screenshot of me texting her, asking her because I wanted to make sure that I was telling the story correctly because she was there. And she had to basically take this big wooden paddle with holes drilled in it and spank me. I don't know if she did or the principal did, both of it, you know, is a red flag thinking about that now. I don't remember how time, how many times, um, but that's what happened. And this is normal in a few places, a few states. In the United States, there are, I think, 30 states that don't allow it. It's not explicitly prohibited, but it may be considered unlawful or maybe unethical. Um, it's not something that should be allowed, um, but there's nothing really how do you say, explicitly prohibiting this from happening. Florida happens to be one of the places that's where I'm from. A lot of these Southern states, 
Um, the Bible Belt, I like to call it, a lot of the places or states in the Bible Belt allow corporal punishment. And so yeah, it's not normal in Germany at all for this to happen. I think that even in-school suspension is a little different and not as harsh in Germany as it is in the United States. That was it. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that point. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory for you guys. And yeah, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something different about this, um, about the United States, about Germany, you can let me know down in the comment section. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'm going, I'm hungry, I'm hot, and love y'all. Bye.